So we're gonna get started with be where the buyers are. Where are the federal buyers? Uh, so <laughs> raise your hand if you know exactly what I'm gonna start with, right? SAM and DSBS is called your small business profile. SAM is run by GSA and it's where you register when you start a business and dynamic small business search tool or DSBS is run by the SBA. Together, they make up your small business profile. Um, this is really important to get in there and get your profile complete. I have a customer in our workshop who has actually gotten business, not just got calls, but got business because they went in and updated their profile, tightened it down, and then used every available space to make sure that they could be found in the place where federal buyers are looking. The Dynamic Small Business Search, DSBS, is the number one market research tool in the federal market, right? It's where federal buyers go. And when you think about how many buyers are out there, you need to be visible when they're looking because you can only knock on less than 1% of the doors. DOD, as an example, has over 200,000 buyers. Um, they have 185,000, I think, um, uh, people who are in the acquisition profession. And then they have all these other people who are buyers. Uh, when you think about the folks in the program office, et cetera, who are doing market research. And throughout the federal government, they are told the dynamic small business search tool is where they should go to try to find small businesses like yours. So you want to make sure your profile looks spot on. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in there, but just to put it back to you, 70% of the companies out there are virtually invisible in there. It's crazy, right? So get in there and um, uh, update your profile. The second place I wanna to talk to you about where buyers are looking that you wanna to begin to go in are agency portals. So if you've heard me talk before, uh, we talk about supplier portals. This is uh, supplier portals that are run by the federal agencies and supplier portals generally run by large prime contractors. And so um, these supplier portals are just like DSBS, except for one step removed. If SAM and DSBS are the number one market research tool, the, the supplier portal, if you will, of federal government contractors, then the supplier portals that agencies run themselves and the um, supplier portals that large primes run, these are their personal um, supplier portals that you wanna be in because the, those agency buyers or large primes are gonna look there first before they even go to DSBS, right? They'll, they always look close to home and then they begin to move out to the other tools. And so um, I just wanna give you one as an example of how important it is and how valuable it could be in your path as a business developer, a capture manager, or a small business owner in trying to sell the federal agencies. So think about HHS. Uh, Health and Human Services has, uh, it's one of the largest agencies out there and it's one of the most small business friendly agencies out there. They have an agency supplier portal that you can go in as a small business and register, right? Maybe they even let larges in there, but I don't really care about larges, right? Um, no offense, larges. Uh, but anyways, so HHS has a small business portal. You go in there and you, and you put your information in and you're basically just regurgitating what's in your SAM and DSBS profile into HHS. But I want you to understand how few people use this and why it's so important for you to get in there. If HHS is telling its buyers, we have created a directory internally for you buyers to look at to find small businesses, um, then, then you want to be in there so that you're being seen. And it doesn't matter whether you're selling um, you know, construction or you're selling uh, uh, products, your manufacturing side of the house, or you're doing professional services like IT or training, um, nursing services, doctor services, et cetera. But I want you to think about these numbers I'm about to tell you, right? Think, in fact, maybe in the chat, um, do me a favor and put, if you're a small business, put SB. If you're a hub zone, woman owned, SDBO or 8A, put that designation into the chat. Because I want, I want to know who's in there as I'm telling you these stats that I'm about to tell you. And these are stats from today, right? And today is, I don't even know what day today is, the 9th, I think. January 9th, 2023. So HHS has a supplier portal. In that supplier portal, they have um, hub zones listed. In SAM, there are 6,205 hub zone companies, right? And that number's a little loose for those of you who are overly data conscious, right? But basically SAM's number says there's 6,205 hub zone companies. If you go into HHS, there are only 838 hub zone companies listed in there. Imagine if all the HHS buyers are only looking into um, their portal and not into SAM. Why should they look into SAM or DSBS if they can look into the HHS supplier portal and find, you know, three, five, 10 hub zone firms, right? You get my point there. But there's 6,200 um, hub zone companies 
in uh, federal government companies, right? And only 838 are in HHS. Let's go to the next level, right? 8As. There's 6,348 8A companies. These are companies that are certified right now as 8A companies, 6,348 companies. Inside of HHS, only 1,464 companies are listed. Why aren't more of you in there, right? Why aren't all of you in there? It's where HHS buyers look. So 6,348 8A companies in the government, but only 1,464 are saying, hey, I want to work with HHS. I'm positive the other 8A firms are going, no, 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 no. We want to work with HHS as well. You're just not where the buyer looks. And I want you to get into the HHS supplier portal as well as others. Just giving you, continuing this number, right? Uh, Women-owned, there's 8,165 women-owned certified companies. By the way, there's probably like 100,000 women-owned companies in the federal space, but only 8,165 are in, in that new SBA certification. 2,535 are in HHS. That means basically 25% are in there and 75% of the women-owned businesses, certified businesses are invisible to HHS buyers. We don't want that, right? And then just rounding it up with SDVOSB, um, service disabled veteran owned small businesses, there's 24,552 SDVOs in SAM, right? Forget about it in the country because there's way more. But in SAM, there's, there's 24,552 companies, only 1,183. I don't even know the math there, right? Somebody else can do the math for me, but you know, it's like 5% or something less. Um, 5%, that means 90, 95% of the SDVOs don't want to do business with HHS. I know that's not the case, but that's the perception when we don't put ourselves in an agency supplier portal. So in this tip about be where the buyers are looking, the buyers are looking in their own portal and multiple agencies have these. Go to www.govconchamber.com and you'll find a free ebook download that you can get right now that has as many of the supplier portals that we're aware of, uh, large prime supplier portals and agency supplier portals. First thing, go there, get it, download it. Second thing is if you see anything missing, you know of one, tell us so we can get it in, right? Imagine if somebody else, five other people found five that you didn't know about, right? And they tell us, we'll let you know. So make sure you're telling us about the ones you know. Let's not keep any secrets among us uh, as we go along. Okay, so that was a lot there. I get pretty excited about it, as you can see. Put agency portals in if you're gonna go commit to getting yourself in your target agency uh, portal. And in fact, I would recommend you just get in every agency portal because it takes you five minutes to get registered in there. You go back to focus on your primary agency. But if you know EPA knocks on your door and says, hey, we, like, we want to buy your services, can we? Sure, come on in, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's talk about the, last, uh, the next place to um, be seen by federal buyers. I talked about DSPS, the number one market research tool, um, agency portals, let's just call that the second, uh, um, second marketing market research tool. The third place I want you to consider is matchmaking events, right? Um, I don't believe you should make everything in your market activity uh, about matchmaking events, right? I don't actually think they have a ton of massive upside value that uh, people sometimes think about. Um, and I consider them a crutch sometimes because uh, we go to those instead of picking up the phone and calling somebody, but that is where buyers are. So for today's training, I'm recommending you get yourself into a matchmaking event. Um, Russ on our, um, Russ Sini, who's uh, on our training today, he sent a post, he sent a message out to me. I, I don't know if you posted it, Russ, um, and maybe you can put it in the chat, but he said that DHS has got a upcoming vendor outreach session uh, this month, I think, and it, um, the registration is gonna happen the next day or so. Um, but that kind of event, it's virtual usually nowadays, right? And it's virtual. So if you can get into as many as possible of these for your primary agency, that's a good thing because you're just being visible. Don't use it as a crutch, but definitely use it for what it could be used for, which is just you raising your hand and saying, I'm here. I would like to work with your agency. Um, so that's matchmaking events. Next one is PTAX. Um, I love I love the whole idea of PTAX and, and um, you get out of the relationships what you put into it. So one of the things to keep in mind is PTAX and like any relationship will be far more healthy or helpful if you dig your well before you're thirsty, like I mentioned in a previous training, right? If you dig your well, meaning build your relationships before you need them. So buyers come to PTAX often to find out if they know of small businesses that can support their needs. Be at a PTAC event. PTAX have a lot of virtual events. You could eat your lunch and attend an event. You could review a PWS while you're also on a virtual 
um, event participating, right? You can be visible. Sometimes you can go in person if they have the in-person events. But if you go to a PTAC event, buyers are often brought into those events um, to team up with the PTACs to share information about their agency or whatever. So be at PTAC events, your local PTAC. And that goes with the second tip I have on PTACs is make sure you have a relationship with your counselor. Often buyers will talk to the counselors, the program director or the counselors within a PTAC and ask them, do you know of any small businesses? And so you want to be where they're looking. If they're looking to the counselors to say, do you know of anybody? You want to be visible to that counselor so much that they instantly remember, oh, Jim, cyber, I got it, right? I know three companies I can refer you to or something. You want to be one of those three companies they refer you to. At the very least, it gets you in the door. What if it gets you a $100,000 contract, million dollar contract, right? Um, so PTACs are the kind of relationships you want to have and maintain through the years. Never get rid of them. Uh, the last tip I want to give you for being where the federal buyers are is um, in LinkedIn. And this is just a quick example because I'm going to talk about LinkedIn more in a minute. But be engaged in LinkedIn. And when I say engaged in LinkedIn, it means just like you might be engaged with um, Facebook where you're giving thumbs up to the kitty hanging from the tree or something, right? Um, and I'll give you an example. Just this morning, the NAVSUP... Um, small business director, I might, I might be butchering his title a little, little bit, but Chris out there posted on the LinkedIn just this morning that NAVSUP and the Navy have an RFI that they're trying to push. I'm actually gonna share it as well, but it's really good information. Um, but they have an uh, RFI they're really trying to push to small businesses on the financial side. I think it's like the fi FinTech, if you will, but um, they have this opportunity, they're pushing it out. If you're on LinkedIn and you're beginning to engage, now you're where the buyers are looking. Chris is posting this on LinkedIn as a way of thinking I can reach industry by telling them I posted something to Sam. He's not throwing it into Sam and, and hoping for the best. He's now engaging on, on LinkedIn. And so if you get in there and give it a thumbs up or you say, hey, Chris, this is awesome. I went and looked at it. Uh, I think I'm going to follow up. So I appreciate you giving us a heads up. Whatever that is, now he's aware of you. He is one of the buyers, right? He's not the contracting officer who signs a contract, but there's a lot of different roles and he is in one of them, now he's visible or he's aware of who you are and you're visible to him. Plus, he might have people in NAVSUP also tracking on his post. And so you're increasing your visibility. Um, so a lot of stuff in there that I talked about, SAM, agency portals, matchmaking events, PTAX, LinkedIn. These are five particular places you can go to be where um, buyers can see you. So let me move on to, well, getting water first off. Uh, do me a favor in the chat, just if you're following with what I'm saying, those five suggestions, just write in there, be where buyers look. If you've got the energy to type those amount of words, right? Be where buyers look. I want to see that message and see where we're getting it. And a special thank, uh, shout out to my sister. She's on there. I just noticed the chat. She's putting the link for you to the HHS portal into the chat. So if you want it, uh, my sister is awesome. And and uh, so at the end, throw a thanks to her and to Gus, because I couldn't do this without them. Um, OK, so let's move on to uh, how to be seen by federal buyers um, by the second tip is letting people know that you're interested in supporting their agency. It's not enough for you to just um, uh, be where they're at. Right now, you want to go out there. So that's passive marketing. That's ninety nine point nine percent of your activity is being in a supplier portal, having a website, these kind of things. That's all passive marketing, passive sales, if you will. They'll find you and maybe let you know they're interested. Now, the other 1% or less than 1% is you knocking on doors. And this is the part about letting them know that you're interested in supporting their agency. So there's three tips I have for you as it relates to this. The first thing is um, just sticking with LinkedIn for one second. Use a LinkedIn headline. Um, again, I, I can't remember, Jim, if, if, you're, if people are able to see headlines. But one of the headlines I liked is uh, Jim Cropper is on here and he is uh, supporting the government, in, in particular Air Force, on cybersecurity. But when you look at his headline, it's it basically says, I, I can't remember what it says, but it basically says, um, I, I provide cyber support to federal agencies, right? I help you uh, take care of your cyber needs. The reason that's good in a headline like that, instead of I'm a, a business owner, I'm a business developer, whatever, your job title's no help. But when you have a headline like that, instead of your job title, if he went and engaged uh, Chris on the NAVSUP RFI I mentioned a minute ago, when he's engaging it, then the customer might, Chris might look at that and go, oh, cyber. Well, this is not about cyber, but now I've got Chris on my mind about cyber. So that's a way to let people know that you're interested in their agency without doing too much work, right? Put it in your LinkedIn headline. So take a look at your headline and go, is it a job title? 
Or is it a message that says, here's what I do, who I do it for, and what transition or transformation you can expect? Um, the second thing I want to talk about is um, intro calls. So the way you let people know you're interested is picking up the phone. I know this seems a little radical, right? But pick up the phone, schedule an introduction call, and let them know you're interested. I have all sorts of training about how do you um, how do you get started on reaching people? How do you do intro calls, right? What's the meeting like? But I want to stick with this idea of when you call people and do an introduction call and you're just letting them know you're interested in supporting, you're not trying to sell anything. You're trying to get in there and have a conversation. I want to use a quick example of how simple this could be. There you go. We help federal agencies minimize cyber attacks. There you go. Thanks, Jim. Um, you can see it in the chat, by the way, if you're able to look at chat, Jim just put his, his headline. It's a great headline. Um, so I want to tell you this quick story about another customer that we're working with who they do elevators, right? And over uh, this past week, we found in GSA, uh, they do elevator works and GSA has the most buildings out there basically. And so we found uh, a whole bunch of uh, elevator related opportunities in GSA's forecast. And when you spit that out and download it into a spreadsheet, uh, two of the columns have two different points of contacts. So this person is so tight in the construction business that they're saying, hey, we help you with the elevators, the things that go up and down. We don't do this, we don't do that, we do this, right? I mean, they actually do a couple other things, but they're very focused on this. And because of that, they're able to focus down into a forecast and say, show me elevator related work. They now have a, a list of over a hundred people with name, email, and phone number. This is what we call targeting in my workshop. Um, name, number, and email, so we know exactly who to call and how to reach them, that they can begin to reach out to. And all of those people, in, the first column is program office people, the second column is small business related people tied to that opportunity, right? And so there's duplicates on the small business thing, but most of the other ones are unique. Um, and it's all across the country, but each one of those people is tied to a particular um, elevator related project. The reason this is so awesome is because now you've got this list of people you've targeted to be able to reach out to. And when I say do intro calls at the beginning of this, I mean, reach out to people that targeted and say, hey, we do elevator work. I know you just had an opportunity. It's, it's gone, but we just want to let you know we're here and we do it. We'd like to hear about, you know, more about your needs. Or if you see in this forecast that opportunities are coming up, you can introduce yourself again and say, hey, we want to go after this. But the way you um, move forward and get seen better by federal buyers is to get in there and let them know you're even interested. So passive sales marketing um, and then uh, active and active is about picking up the phone. So the next one I want to talk about, by the way, in the chat, if you're following along, just say, uh, pick up the phone. That, that is the most important thing. What we have found is the hardest thing for small businesses. And we help thousands of small businesses. The hardest thing for them to do is to pick up the phone. The hardest thing for me to do is to pick up the phone. I still have to do it, right? I still have to pick up the phone and say, Hey, we do this. Can we do an intro call? Um, but put it in because picking up the phone is the difference between succeeding and not succeeding. Doing that intro call, it's all about picking up the phone. So put pick up the phone in the chat. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk to you about is a 15 minute per day uh, to increase visibility. I'm looking at my time here. Um, so there's 15 minutes I want you to do. And I wanted today's tip. I could give you a whole day's set of activity and planning if you're in sales of what you should be doing and how to best manage your time. But for the interest of today's time, I'll give you one tip and it's about LinkedIn and it's about engaging on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the only professional network out there. I love YouTube, I'm on YouTube constantly, but I can't engage with anybody on YouTube, really. LinkedIn was built for professional communication, right? Facebook is not built for professional communication. Twitter is built for something other than communication, right? It's like. Um, but LinkedIn is built for professional communication. It's where we're basically used to having professional conversations with each other. We're open to connections. Reach out to me. We'd love to network, right? That's the whole point of LinkedIn. And so I want to talk to you about engaging on LinkedIn for 15 minutes every day. You block your time, whatever time your business day starts, not when you wake up, but when your business day starts and you come in, you look at your day and before you even look at the fires or the priorities, just do 15 minutes. Um, so 7 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever it is, 15 minutes engaging on LinkedIn. So you open up LinkedIn. Um, part of the activity I want you to do is to make sure you're following enough people that you are able to engage. And so if you have less than a thousand connections, you need to work on that, right? It's not this magical number of 500 or something else, but a thousand related connections to what you sell 
is really a good number to have on LinkedIn because not everybody's posting. You won't be able to engage all the time. So you're not going to go out and just connect with a whole bunch of people, but you're going to slowly aim for that thousand number. Um, so I want you to follow three types of people, government agency points of contact. So you can follow the government agency itself. Um, I put out every day at eight o'clock a post on LinkedIn related to an agency. You can often find me putting in links to their company page. If you follow those pages, you're going to hear about that agency from their own um, words, right? From what they want to share. So there's also government people. I'll go into PEO Digital in the Navy as an example, and I can connect with all sorts of people in there, or excuse me, follow, not connect with them, but just follow so I can see what content they're sharing. You can do this with industry teammates and then also OEM. So if you're doing elevators, you might connect with, or you might follow the Otis elevator page. If you're doing Microsoft stuff, you can follow the Microsoft page. That way you're able to see it and engage it. So you're engaging with people and companies. Um, make sure on all of these people you follow that are in the GovCon space or related to your company, hit the notification bell so you get um, notified. In fact, for my profile, make sure you're connected or following me and hit that bell notification because I don't share anything that's not related to your government contracting success um, desire. So uh, hit the bell notification for me too. Just write in the chat, hit the bell. Um, okay, so the, I'm going to speed up on these last couple because I'm running out of time. But every morning, that 15 minute time, review your notifications. There's a notification tab that says, hey, here's all the activity. Review it and engage in the relevant uh, content to what you sell, right? So don't try to reshare the things I share. You're trying to be cyber focused or elevator focused, right? You want to be known as that subject matter expert. So review first your notification, which is primarily the people you're following, and then review your feed, which is what LinkedIn thinks you'd be interested in. And wherever it makes sense, over that 15 minutes, engage and just come back the next day, come back the next day. The last thing is clean your feed as you go along. If you see stuff that just doesn't make sense, like my stuff is in your profile, but you don't like it, just hit the three dots and say unfollow and LinkedIn will no longer put it in your feed. You can always go to my profile, but it won't go there. By the way, don't do that to me. Unfollow somebody else. Okay, we're running out of time. I just want to recap really quick to be more visible. Um, be where buyers look. Let buyers know that you want them to, that you want to work with them and then engage with buyers for 15 minutes every single day. And here's my tip for you today. Go download our supplier portal, the ebook, free ebook I said today. Go download it and get into the supplier portal of your target agency if you haven't already. Um, hey, if you'd like to work with us, we have a workshop. Ping me and I'll let you know. It's generally for companies that are doing a million or more. Throw a thanks in if you find value in today's training. And remember, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you in the next training.